Let's do a quick overview of Outlook and the Cloud user interface. What you see on the left is the folder pane. You have multiple folders here. It starts with favorites and you can add folders into favorites by right clicking on the folder and saying add to favorites. Some folders are already in favorites. For example, the most important ones are inbox sent items and drafts and you can add more by clicking button here as well. Another important feature right on the folder pane is switching between productivity applications right within Outlook. Right now, we are in the email client, which is indicated by this icon. We can also switch to calendar, then switch to people. This is basically the list of your contacts. We can also switch to attachments. These are the files that are available for you to attach. We can also look at to-do list and add additional tasks here. So as you can see, one of the coolest features of Outlook is the fact that you can have all of your productivity tools in one place, and you can use them right within Outlook. To launch Outlook in the cloud, you click on the Outlook icon. When I launch Outlook for the first time, this is the screen I see. There are no messages, and there is nothing in here in those folders. And unfortunately, our familiar ribbon interface is missing. Not sure why Microsoft decided to make the change, but there is probably a good reason behind it. Let's first look at what is Outlook. Outlook is first of all an email client. It allows you to manage your emails, create new emails, send emails, respond to emails, create calendar appointments from emails, and do a lot of other things. In addition to being an email client, Outlook is also an exceptional contacts manager. It also allows you to do calendar and planning, do task management, and do file management using OneDrive. And last but not least feature you gotta love as a business user is having all your day in one place. These and a lot of other features that Microsoft packed into this program make Outlook an exceptional application, and this is the main reason why it commands, and this is why most organizations use it for emails, calendar and appointments, productivity, and data manager to organize knowledge workers' data. Let's go back to the email client and continue the overview of the user interface. The middle pane right here is typically where you see the emails. Based on your folder selection, whether you're looking at inbox, send items, you will see different emails that you received or sent. Because I just started with this email account, I do not have any emails, but we are about to change that. Before we start looking at the emails in more details, let's look at other configuration components of Outlook. In the upper right corner, we have Skype application, and Skype is the business messaging tool. So you can start chats and connect with your colleagues using the chat feature of Skype. Another cool feature of Outlook that I use very often is My Day. When you click on it, you see important emails, you see your calendar events, and you see to-dos. That's how it's organized, and you can customize it as well. If you click on this button, you have access to Outlook settings. This is help. And the last but not least is what's new. And the last icon shows your account information where you can sign out from this account. One of the things I'd like to pinpoint that we have four panes here. Folder pane, this is email pane, this is detailed pane where we'll see the detailed messages. And then we have settings, Skype, and other important things here on the right pane. Microsoft was always on the forefront of productivity innovation, and I think we would have to appreciate how well they designed and thought all of this through as we start looking at the details of creating emails and other applications available in Outlook. Speaking about productivity innovation, let's talk about Outlook's cool features. It is an organized environment. Everything here is in one place. Outlook is one of the applications most commonly used in the workplace. You only need to learn it once and then you can enjoy whatever version your company has, because they're very similar. This particular version that we're looking at is the web-based, but there are also mobile versions as well as the desktop versions, so it's available on all platforms. It allows you to organize your data in folder structure. Very similar to File Explorer, you can organize all your emails and calendar appointments, and it provides exceptional search simplicity and search capabilities. I gotta tell you, I love this tool so much, and I use it every day, and I enjoy every cool feature of it. To create new email in Outlook, you need to click New Message button. All you need to do is type the email address of the user in the To box. I'll be using my own email address so we can see the results of the work when we receive the same email. Keep in mind that you can always send email to yourself or you can copy yourself in the emails. Let's pretend that I'm writing this email to my boss and I have creative idea of how we can market our new product. I'm gonna put a subject. Let's create YouTube marketing video for our Flagman product. For example, I can write, Hi John, I have a great idea on how we can market our Flagman product. I think we can do video tutorial for our Flagman product and show its cool features. Based on my research, YouTube videos are easy to search for keywords, both on YouTube itself and through Google. 
because most people find our product through keywords, it means, and you see that I did misspell here because I used word means twice, and I can remove it because Outlook highlights the duplicate word and you can easily remove it. But let's go back to this sentence. Because most people find our product through keyword search, it means you reach our niche audience easily. Now, I'm happy with my message, but I would like to do some highlighting here. Our flagman product, I would like to make it in bold. To do that, I need to highlight the text and click bold. And as you can see, all formatting options are right here at the bottom of the screen. In addition to highlighting some text in bold, I can also highlight other text in italic. For example, YouTube videos are easy to search by keywords, and I can highlight this as an italic. And you see it enhances the text because it points viewers, whoever reads this text, to specific keywords that they could use. Now I'm so excited and happy that I'm ready to send it because I think John would be very happy about this idea. So I click send button and email goes. And finally, here's a response from John. Hi Vadim, this is an excellent idea. Please go ahead and do more research to let me know what the options are. Thanks, John. I would like to pinpoint a couple things. As you can see, it's still one email, despite all the responses back and forth. It has two components now because Outlook breaks email into multiple sections based on the conversation. You can see the details by clicking this three dot button, but it helps you organize because you might receive and have multiple email threads with multiple people. But you can still see all the details by clicking this button. Now I have options of clicking reply to John or forwarding this email to somebody else. I also have options to reply, reply to all forward or more options right here in the upper right corner of this particular response. Now time passed and I had time to complete my research. I click reply button and I'm replying back to John. Based on my research, we need to do the following. And it lists seven different tasks of what we need to complete. Now it looks kind of plain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of my tasks and I can either add bullets or numbering. And both of these options are available here. So you can do bullets right here or numbers right here. Whichever way you prefer, you can use either one. I continue my message. I have also put together some thumbnails for YouTube videos and attached them to this message. You see that Outlook has a suggestion of spelling of YouTube. So what you can do here, you can click on this word and it shows you possible options. So I'm going to select YouTube with capitalized letters because this is more appropriate spelling for this. And as I look back, I see that the screencast might also be misspelled. So I'm going to click on screencast and I'm going to choose the better spelling for screencast. Now I had some basic image editing skills and I put few thumbnails on my drive. Right now they are on my desktop and I would like to attach them. To attach files, I need to click on attach icon and this will bring me a dialog box that will help me select the files. When I click on this, Outlook in the cloud has three different options. You can attach files from your computer, from cloud locations, or you can upload and share. I am going to choose the option browse my computer because this is where the files are located. I see all the thumbnails that I put together. I'm going to select them holding the shift button and click open. Now because my files are large because these are images, Outlook pinpoints that and it offers me an option to upload them on OneDrive and just share the link so I don't have to send all attachments as a message. I can also attach files as a copy and they will be attached to this message. And the last option, insert picture, embeds it right into this email message. So when receiver opens up the file, they see image right inside the body of the email. I like this option because I want John to see everything that I put together. So I'm going to choose that. All images have been attached and I'm ready to send. I'm pushing send button and hoping that the John will like my next steps. Now let's pretend that we have access to John's mailbox and sneak peek into what John can see. So John, when receiving this message, will see all of the attachments right here. And you see attachments by default do not show up in Outlook. But if you double click on the message, you can see the preview of all the image attachments. And here you have different options. You can download all attachments or you can save attachments onto OneDrive. So you will have copies of all of these attachments. I would like to pinpoint one of the cool features of Outlook. Remember when we looked at all four panes, we had left pane, which represents the folders, then the middle pane, which represents the email messages, the right pane that represents the details behind the messages, and then we have the fourth pane where you can switch between most frequently used applications. We've also looked at the possibility for you to switch between different productivity apps, for example, calendar, and one of those apps was attachments. So this is where it's useful, where you can see all of the attachments that you receive from all of the emails, and you can quickly find what you're looking for. John can find the right image, it will pinpoint to the message where it was received, 
And John can do different things with this image. John can download the image. John can use this image in a full screen mode, print it, or share via email. Now let me share with you some cool new enhancements that you can check out on your own, as Microsoft introduced these features in the latest release. One of them is correction of spelling and grammar. So not just we're looking at the correct spelling of the words, Outlook also gives you suggestions for the grammar. You have access to emojis and animated GIF files. You can include them to emotionalize your messages. Automatic translation into different languages. Managing multiple calendars. You can just add additional calendars into Outlook to monitor and respond to different accounts. You can snap calendars and view them side by side. You can also view events in your task list. And last but not least, you can take advantage of dark mode so your eyes are not as strained and you can be more productive for longer. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.